Hi and welcome back to this week's New Zealand Property Podcast video series and uh, we've got another guest today, uh, James Bremner from Oxygen 8 sitting here next to me. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much Mark, uh, great to be here. Okay and um, we've got James along and it's not a total uh, episode about property today but I know out there there's many people who are very similar to who I was probably 10 to 12 years ago. They love property, they're passionate about it and they wanted to start a business within in property and that might be a staging uh, company, uh, property management company, building company, whatever it might be. And unfortunately back then I learned by, <laughs> by touch and by mistake. <laughs> and as, really, as a lot of people do unfortunately. Yeah, and I didn't really have too many people I could uh, talk to to help me. So James uh, is a, who will tell me in a minute what he is, but he's sort of a, 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 a coach or helps, helps businesses big and small um, make sure they get themselves going and, and doesn't really miss anything in between. So we'll start off maybe um, just ask a bit about your business and then a bit about you. So tell us sure. about your business and what you do to start off with. Absolutely. Well, uh, well I work with Oxygenate and we are business success partners and we work long term with business owners to increase profits, growth and business value. Now, lots of different elements in that, um, you know, um, long term, you know, you can't, uh, there are no quick fixes, uh, kind of as, as, as we know. Uh, so there's no one little thing, do this, do that, everything's wonderful. Mm. Um, running a company well or improving a company or launching a company successf successfully as a, as a multi-year project. Uh, so long term, uh, with business owners, we work uh, in the smaller media marketplace. We don't you know, do, the, do the large corporate space. Uh, so our, our products, our services and our, our business, our cost structure is set up for that small and uh, media marketplace. Um, and to improve profits, growth, and business value. Well, profit at the end of the day, um, business needs to pay pay the owner a salary uh, in order for them to pay some bills. It needs to generate a profit because that's how business is valued. Uh, even if a owner is taking a decent salary, if at the end of the day there's no profit, that business isn't worth anything. Mm, correct. Um, and business value. Well, a lot of people you know, they go into business, they want an income, but they are also looking to build an asset that they can sell to help fund, fund their retirement. So it's important that the, the business has some value. So um, we work, I'm here with Oxygenate. We are in the Auckland area, basically the, uh, anywhere from the Bombay Hills to, um, to Cape Rianga. Uh, we are part of the consulting group, which has other groups, um, uh, business success partners. Uh, we actually, there's about 40, in the consulting group, there's about 40 people all over New Zealand. So if you reach out to either Oxygenate or the consulting group, you will find someone uh, near you who can help you. Um, but we are here in Auckland, we have about um, 10, uh, 10 consultants. Um, it's a growing organization, uh, a lot of need out there. Um, and we have a, a really, a very good program uh, that works. Um, it's, it's nothing flash, it's just basically business planning. We start with a business plan, um, a comprehensive evaluation of what the company's doing, mm -hmm. what they want to do. Uh, we figure out, you know, maybe they want to do something slightly different. There are usually, usually some changes and some tweaks in, in, in that process. And then rather than presenting, now oh, here's your lovely, bright, shiny business plan, isn't that nice? Uh, and uh, here's our bill, see you later, have fun. We stay uh, for as long as necessary to implement the plan. And, like I, and as I say, that, that, that can be a multi-year um, process where we sort of really become sort of part of the company. Yep. Sort of like, I don't know, the director of strategy, the, um, like an independent director. Um, but certainly initially we're heavily involved as the project manager in the train change process as the company is addressing all the areas that we've identified that need to be addressed and, um, and implementing that change. And we'll go through a few of them soon. So uh, most people when they come um, to see you, are they starting out or they've had to go themselves first and then need help? Uh, it's, a, it's a real mix. Um, we do talk to some startups and that's great. That, that's, that's the best time mm, to definitely. talk to someone because uh, you know, so many people, you know, that they burn, you know, a bunch of money, uh, maybe they borrow money and they get themselves in quite a jam before they sort of acknowledge that they need some help. Uh, and that's a, it's just a real shame um, to get there. But we certainly talk with people who've been in their, their company for a number of years and maybe they're not in a jam, but maybe they recognize, wow, this is really hard. I'm, I'm working hard and mm -hmm. I'm making almost no money. Uh, a lot of business owners, if you divide you know, what they are at the companies able to, able to pay them divided by the hours that they're putting into the business, yep. it's probably Obviously. minimum wage or lower. <laughs> yep. I mean, it's in some cases, some extreme cases. Mm. Um, okay, and just, um, and just before we start getting into the nuts and bolts of actually what to do and how to do it, uh, what sort of, just sort of briefly in um, your experience to get to this point, you've had, I know, many experiences that, that helps you 
healthy people. So Absolutely. what have you been up to? Well, my, uh, my sort of background is um, originally I'm an accountant. Um, I worked for KPMG in uh, Wellington, uh, auditing back in the early 90s for four years. Uh, took off to go and see the world like a lot of Kiwis do, backpacking around South America, worked on super yachts and sailboats for a number of years in uh, the Caribbean and Mediterranean. And then I went to business school in the States. Uh, and then I was the director of financial operations for a ship and rig building yard that had 23 shipyards on the Gulf Coast of the, of the US and um, uh, out of Florida, Alabama, Mississippi and Texas and Louisiana. Uh, about a billion dollars in revenue, um, about 3,000 employees, uh, all sorts of interesting things mm. uh, happened, um, great experience. Then I worked for a couple of startup companies uh, where we were commercializing some technology that had been developed at the uh, School of Naval Architecture and Marine Engineering in, uh, in New Orleans in the States. And then I worked, uh, we formed a partnership with a bank and with Lloyd's Register of Shipping uh, to try and uh, develop a product, uh, kind of like a fuel card, right. but um, you know, not 50 bucks of diesel. This is you know, five hundred thousand dollars worth of bunker fuel for ships. Wow! So I did that in the states, and that was a lot of fun. And I came back here about a couple of years ago, and have been working with Oxygenate since then. And uh, so yeah, I think I think what you know, uh, what I bring to the party that's maybe a little bit different. I've got that kind of big end of the town, corporate mm. accounting. You know, obviously I know accounting very well, but I've actually worked extensively in small businesses mm. where we, you know, it's a startup, you don't have a lot of resources, um, so you get into like, you know, product development, um, we're sort of concept development, product development, sort of marketing, launches, rollouts, all that kind of business development, all that kind of stuff. So um, I kind of able to kind of bring all that together, which uh, seems to seems to go really well. Definitely. Uh, okay, so when someone's um, ready to start the business, what, what's the first thing they should be doing to look at? Just follow them out there and sell their product? Well, no, very <laughs> definitely not. I mean, the first thing you need to do, you really need a very clear idea of what it is that what the market need that you're seeking to fulfill, okay? And that uh, will come from your experience in that particular market. Um, I wouldn't recommend to anyone kind of jumping in to start a business in, in an industry that they don't have a lot of experience with because yep. you need that experience and knowledge and you need those connections when, when you're launching a business. So basically, I kind of explain it, yeah, if you have a good match between, you know, that market need and, you know, the product that you're selling, if that sort of fits like a hand in a glove, that's the, co the core of business. Mm. If you have that right, you know, you've got to get a lot of, a lot of other things right um, to be successful. But if you have that right, um, that's crucial. If you don't have it right, it doesn't matter what else happens, what else you do, how well you do all the other things in business, it, it's not going to work that well. It might work okay, but it, it's not going to not going to be great by any stretch of the imagination. So that's understanding the market, and that really I like mm -hmm. to say when I'm talking to people, um, you know, as human beings, we see the world through our eyes. We, we in any given situation, we bring our experience and our assumptions and our mm -hmm. views to a situation, and, and that that's useful information. But what really matters is what the customer or your potential customer thinks and feels. So I like to kind of, you know, I guess the analogy I use is, you know, like a conning tower. You know, you open up the customer's head and you pop inside his brain and look at the world or her brain and look at the world through their eyes, okay? And that's not something you just do once. You, you've got to constantly be looking at the world through your customer's eyes because that's how you're going to get, uh, really understand that market need. Um, so that's the key thing and it's a key attitude that, it's not just for a startup, all businesses need to have that attitude. And, and when you have a, a great experience um, of service or a product or whatever, it's kind of almost like um, the company, they're kind of like reading your mind. Yep. And that's what they've done. You know, that they've looked at the world through your eyes as a customer of that particular product or service. And they've really analyzed it and they've really thought about it um, and they've delivered something that just fits and it's a beautiful experience. So, so that's the key thing, Make, don't, you know, jump into a business unless you spend a lot of time figuring that out and you're really comfortable that you have that right and you have some experience and some discussions um, from uh, with people. Another thing I would say is um, it's really important is talk to as many people as you can about your idea. Um, we call that market validation. Um, and, you know, the more people, even potential competitors, um, you know, people, you know, if you, people are nice that they'll, give you ideas mm. the, the key thing you want to avoid is is going out there and failing okay 
because that's, you know, maybe you will have burnt up some capital, maybe you borrowed some money um, against your house, you know, you spend two or three years of your life and then bang, you fall over. Mm. That's just really destructive to a, a person's kind of financial life. Um, and I, it, Yeah, I think what you said there too is that a lot of people, you know, one of the things I picked up there is talk to your competitors because a lot of people think competitors are the enemy, mm. don't go anywhere near them. I mean, when I first started, even finding property as a business, I guess, on my own mm-hmm. was the first, and I didn't look around the country and go, who's actually good at this? You know, this guy here, this lady here, and I went out and met them all and had a coffee, and you know, now, in fact, one of them provides a whole lot of business to right. property ventures. That's right. Um, so that's obviously a good good way. How else do people, um, you know, as I said, trying to get outside their brain, in this uh-huh. case here, to think how the customer thinks? How else can you sort of find that out from the customer what they really want. If, if there's any um, um, business maybe that's a little bit similar or playing in the same space that you think you, you want to play in, um, maybe go along and try and be a customer of, of some of the products that are out there or certainly sit and you know talk or try and go through the process, see how it feels. Um, you know, again, talking to um, potential uh, people, potential customers, and again, if you're starting a business, you should be in the industry, you should be able to identify some people who, who would be users um, of, of your product or service, go talk to them uh, and be really open. See, the, the key thing, you know, the key thing, your best friend is the person who says, no, that's not a good idea, or even that's a really stupid idea, don't do it. That person is not your enemy, that person's your best friend because mm. they've just saved you a small <laughs> fortune yeah. in two or three years of your life. Uh, and, and not all ideas are, are the best, and that's okay. Yeah. So some of the best entrepreneurs in the world have, have been through multiple ideas um, before they've got there, and, and the good ones, as I say, spend all the time in the world, um, you know, on the, the planning phase, um, and then, you know, if it's a good idea, they do it, and if they, it's, it's not a good idea, you know, they don't do it. R- Richard Branson, the English entrepreneur, has, has a good kind of phrase. He says, um, opportunities are just like buses, you know, there's just another one just around the corner. Mm. So don't fall in love, and it's another key mistake people make, they fall in love with their own BS mm. to, to, to be a uh, to be blunt or to be agricultural about it um, and you know you just fall in love with this idea and you want to do it and it's going to be so good you, you detach that emotion you, you got to got to separate emotion from decision making mm. in, in all aspects of life and, and business um, so um, don't fall in love with the idea if it, you just can't quite get there with it then drop it don't do it just go wait think of another idea wait for a little bit of time only because you're going to devote a significant chunk of your life to this idea you, you've got to make sure it's a good one before you jump in mm, absolutely so you've got your idea of uh, a product or a service um you've you've done your market research you've thought of how the the, the buyer or the uh person that's buying your uh, service mm-hmm. um the, the, then what from there so you've got a good idea now now here you implement it yeah well go yeah go and um you know try and you know, keep your existing job and try and, you know, a lot of people start a business as a, as a side hustle, okay? They start doing some stuff on the side and again, they're testing their idea but they're um, managing their financial risk because uh, it's what some people do, they go out, you know, and then they, they run out of their own capital, you know, reasonably quickly and there's all, you know, even from all the planning side, you know, there's still going to be a learning process, you're still going to learn stuff. So, you know, the more you can um, you know, as I say, um, either keep your own job or manage your financial risk and, and try this idea out on the side. Um, so, so try that again, see, you know, get, a, get all that feedback, you're just really, uh, you know, getting all that feedback. And actually, before, and before you even do that, actually, I, I should have, you know, you need to, um, you know, work out a budget, okay? And you need to crunch some numbers, and you need to crunch some numbers not because that's really fun, um, but you need to figure out, you know, is this a viable idea? And that only comes from thinking and making conservative assumptions about your cost structure uh, and then put in a salary for you, to, <laughs> don't forget that, um, and make some conservative of assumptions um, about you know, the, the, the revenue side of things, um, the number of you know, sales you could get. Uh, again, if, if there's a similar, similar product out there, I mean, you ought to get some kind of feel for what your price point should be. Uh, and that really gets into, the again, the... Um, seeing the world through your customer's eyes. Is, is this kind of like a premium level product mm. that you know you can charge quite a bit of money for? Um, they're obviously you know, very good ones to get in. Um, uh, or is it a, a lower margin product? The problem with lower margin products is you have to sell a lot, a lot of them to, to generate a sufficient return. Um, so try and avoid low margin opportunities. 
Uh, but you need, you need to crunch that budget. Uh, you need to ensure um, that you can, that this is a worthwhile opportunity, that numbers make sense, uh, that it produces a profit. And then, you know, as I say, and then you've got to track that month by month by month. Uh, and then I would say uh, one of the first things you need to do is get um, a, an accountant who can sort of help you with that budgeting piece. Um, now they're not going to know, no, not, not, an accountant is not going to know a lot about marketing or, or the market, okay, that's your job, okay, um, to, to know that. What an accountant will be good uh, is helping you with is sort of your, understanding your cost structure and if you thought of this, if you thought of that, and get, getting all the numbers in, in, in your, on the cost side that you, that you know. Um, another thing you need to get is, is a bookkeeper because a, as you go along, you really need to be uh, working on the things that make a difference in your business. Uh, how you spend your time is really important and, and you know, sitting on the weekend or at night, you know, in, in entering data, you know, in, into, uh, into zero or whatever mm. is, is not a great use of your time. And for 80 or 100 bucks a month, you can get a bookkeeper who can take that burden off you, who can do it right if that's mm. not your background and who will ensure that you have those numbers I at any time you, you, can, you can look at your accounting system and, and you're going to know where you are and it's really important that you do. Yeah, that's hugely important. That's one thing I didn't do for a couple of years or a year or so was actually monitor, monitor and actually have the bookkeeping done as good as it did. And I know mm. that cost me thousands of dollars oh, by, by not doing it very quickly. You know, yes, absolutely. Bigger and, bigger. and I guess it's no different than when you start out doing a renovation on a project, which a lot of people here can relate to, as they have their, their budget for what it is. You, you put on a 10% factor or whatever it might be, <laughs> or risk margin. Uh, there's always going to be a risk margin yes. <laughs> with, with uh, a business as well as a property. Absolutely. Um, so, yeah, those are great, great wee tips there. It does, I mean, it's, it amazes me how many businesses don't actually use an accounting system. Mm. And, and, yep, and I've seen some like that too. So. Some of the first jobs I've done, the first thing we do, okay, put an accounting system. And they've, they've basically, a business owner's been running the business basically from their bank account. Mm. Now they've got an invoicing system to create invoices so they know kind of what their revenue number is and they've got some costs. I'm sure there's some spreadsheet or a piece of paper somewhere that's kind of got their costs on it, but, but they, they are running, there's a huge amount of guesswork there. Oh, it's a good year, my bank balance is up. Okay, well, what about that piece of equipment you need to buy? In reality, no, <coughs> so it's a horrible year mm. uh, if, you, if you account for everything that needs to be accounted for. Yeah. So, so numbers matter. And anyway, I think I sit there every two months, I've already nothing else, every, you know, I've got bookkeepers and stuff to do all that now, but every two months I'll sit down with my um, representative at the accountancy firm that I work with and uh, we just go through and we look at, you know, why is, why is this up high, why are, um, uh, why are your, your debtors so you know, high or, or just, and you can, you, you go against what your advertising is against your income versus everything. It's so easy to see when it's done correctly and coded, coded correctly. And if I was doing it, the city wouldn't be coded correctly. Yeah, that's right. It never, I mean, yeah. never used to be until I yes. got the professionals on it for a couple hundred that's bucks right. a month, as you're saying, or two months for, it's a great, great money right. spent. Yeah, I mean, and that goes to kind of one of the other really important things about um, you know starting to contemplating starting a business. I mean, no one can know everything. Mm. You know, it's, it's not possible. Um, there's just so much, so many different uh, areas of knowledge uh, in a business. No one can know everything. So it's it's about getting the right team around you. You know, an accountant, a bookkeeper, um, a, a web designer, whatever it is. Mm. You know, you'll be good at something. Um, one aspect of the business. You know, you know, you'll be outstanding, and it's your job to be outstanding in that business, and, and and you need to be or that aspect, and you need to concentrate on doing that, and then make sure, that, you know, you you got the whole team around you to that make sure everything that needs to happen does happen. Yeah. I got told many years ago that if um if you're the brightest man in your team, you, you're you're in trouble. Yes, And I'll, I'll take that to true. the limit, bro. <laughs> make sure I'm the least brightest in the team. So yeah. I've got great people around me. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> it, it works. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. So um, so moving, moving on. So once you've got a, a team going or a, a, job, a your business working and going along, then um, your things like uh, advertising and you know, yeah. how do you, what you. Thoughts on well, that, well, that, that depends, I guess. But. Well, that comes back to, um, I guess, brand, and I guess you know, and then you do need to be thinking about your brand sort of early on in your planning process. Uh, we do live in a world where, um, you know, um, people make judgments, you know, sort of instantly. Um, so you do need to make sure you have a brand that looks credible. Now, having said that, I'm not saying that you should throw a whole bunch of money at, at design and, and websites and all that kind of stuff. Have have something that you know is is halfway decent, 
Um, don't throw a whole bunch of money at a website uh, until you know you've got some traction. Mm. But what, what your website needs to be, you should be getting most for most businesses. You should be getting most of your sales initially through uh, through your efforts mm. and, and or through, through referrals. But it should be you know the owner again. You would want to go into a business. You've started. You've started on the side. You you talked to some people you knew um, who, who might need your your service. So you've been doing that. You've had a good result. You've got feedback, and then so you're working with those people. Hey, who else do you know mm. who needs um, who needs the service? A great thing to do is is uh, what Mark and I do, which is um, business networking. Uh, we're a member of a um, BNI chapter here in, uh, in Newton in Auckland, uh, and that's a great place um, to go uh, and from a, on a very low cost basis find those potential uh, users, um, uh, um, initial, initial users. Mm. So um, as you say, yeah, so the brand is important. Uh, the website, a website is, is a credibility statement as much as anything else. That's the reason I think don't go in there straight away and do it when you're starting on a yes. cheap, because it, when you do do it, it's got to look good. Yes, it is, yeah. So I mean, um, yeah, I guess the, you know, the first thing, you, you, you do need a, a website to start with or, or relatively early in your process. So that, that, that can, that's kind of dependent on, on the opportunity. Some opportunities you will be more dependent on um, or looking to ge generate leads from, from the internet. Others, you know, early on, as I say, be more personal interaction and referrals. Uh, a website in this day and age, um, it used to be just like, um, like a business card online, okay? Very bland, very unsophisticated. What a website needs to do these days, as well as have a you know a sharp um, look or a cre credible look, is um, it needs to have content. It needs to a website needs to be um, it's not static. It can't be static. Uh, a website is a bit of a living, breathing organism. Uh, so it needs you need to be putting some content up there, and then yeah, maybe find yourself um, a website um, company, and they can help you with developing some of that content. They can help you. Um, finding good links to put to your site because you, you need a, a website person so they can ensure that your website can be seen in the search engines. Um, maybe you'll use things like Google AdWords. Um, and so you know, you, part of your strategy, your go-to-market strategy is figuring out you know, um, you, 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 what your website needs to be at what point of your business. Yep. Uh, and, and it will change and that's fine. And you're plenty of um, you know, you're not the first person that's ever done what you're doing. Also, so when that's you go right. to a website designer, they've had experience, and and you know you see some companies they've dealt with, you might go, oh, okay, hey, they're, they're pretty good. They do, you know, that's they're, right. They'll do better than I do right now. Yes. And as, as I said, it's a, it's a growing thing. When you get more money to invest, yes, and it, it, at the right time, you can do it. But um, yeah, don't uh, you, you go there when the time's right. I think you don't need that's to right. Yeah, don't, 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 dear, don't. Um, um, wait until I've got to get the website. The website's got to be right. So you put an mm. enormous amount of time and effort and money into it before you've kind of really gone to market. Mm. You go to market before, as I say, have a, have a put something up simple, uh, or even if you're, if you're really starting out, just what's more important is getting um, that feedback on your idea. Mm. So that means going, finding some customers, doing whatever it is you do, and asking them, hey, how, how did it go? you know anyone else who, who might need you know what I do mm. so that that's the first thing you do websites follow fr from that Tip typically as I yeah. say some some all businesses are different and there will be some businesses that will be very much uh, internet led um, and and that that's fine and that would again you would want someone to want to work with someone to, to figure that out that's right that was great in the fact I sort of did that by default I guess um, when to start out as you said you should uh, have a bit of market research, see how you get on before you start spending a whole whole lot of money. Um, you, you said you should be in the business, so people know you anyway, start yes. selling it, you said getting the feedback, seeing if it works, and then you, you know, like us, we've got a website till we, we I guess, grew, grew, and then we go, right, yeah, now we need something else to tell the world about it, not, not just That's us right. and people we know. So That's right. That, yeah, progression sort of period. Okay, so what's, um, what else, what's another uh, feature, um, or main, some of the main points that you should be looking at? Yeah, I would say you know very quickly um, you need to be thinking about processes, and that's you know how you do certain things in your organisation, uh, and specifically yeah, again who is going to do that process mm. or, or the, the steps in that process. And you know you've got a client acquisition process, so okay, is that you know what is that you know who, who are we who we're going to call on? How are we going to contact them? Um, do we have a, a, a tool for kind of it can be manually to start with for kind of tracking that process. 
and then there's whatever it is that you do. You know, a business needs to do two things. It needs to acquire clients and it needs to execute the business. Mm. So your processes um, are really important. Um, and then for a startup, and it sounds a little bit sort of counterintuitive, why should I be kind of you know, doing all this boring stuff about writing processes? The reason you do it is because quite quickly you want to be pulling out of different parts of the business as you get people to do those things. And, and you, rather than you, know, you trying to explain to the person, okay, this is how we do it, it's so much better if you can hand them some stuff, look, okay, this is kind of basically what we do. Obviously, we're going to talk about it and go into more detail, but it's really important that, that you have, you, you don't have the time as the business owner to be you know, explaining every, every one or what to do for every, every, every simple thing. So um, quality processes are good, um, and um, you shouldn't get any, implement any systems really until you've really thought about your processes, because if all you use a system for is to turbocharge a bad process, mm. you know, it's not gonna go that well. So thinking about really crisp, clear, and, cre and clean processes. A uh, perfect example is um, I'm working with a client and with the, the owner of the business is a Cracker Jack salesperson and she loves going out, um, you know, getting the business and she gets it very well. What she is kind of falling down in is uh, their business involves, um, and it's properly re related, it's furnishings. There's, there's a lot of measurement involved um, and recording of details. And she's not recording that stuff in a way that she can hand it off to her production person. Right. And her production person um, can then do her job. So she hands the, the production person a bunch of stuff and then she looks and she's trying to figure out, you know, well, what is this, what's this, what's that, all oh, that's missing. Um, and then so she can't do her job properly. She has to wait until she talks to the business owner, what about this, what, what about that? Uh, so at the moment, that, that there's a real, you know, the productivity of the person doing production is probably at 50% mm. because they're not getting the information they need. And so what we're doing, you know, very simply is um, developing some forms. I'm going to make them on pads. So, you know, the, the people doing sales are going to have these forms and they're going to be required to fill them out completely, um, ideally at the job or very shortly thereafter, mm. hand them over to the production person. She's going to look at them and that will get bounced back uh, if it's not complete. Um, and yeah, that will kind of be recorded as, as, a, as a fail in the process and we're going to track that. Mm. You know, how many bounce backs do, do we get? So, so that's an example of you know, processes, good processes, understanding the process and understanding in every business there's, there's one or two things that if you get them wrong it causes a huge problem. Mm. Now in furnishings you can imagine measurement. If you get the wrong measurement you know, of that, that's a, yeah, <laughs> yeah, go, go make another one. You, you go make another set of lines that doesn't mm. fit. It's a disaster, mm. okay? So in every business that, that there's a key point or a couple of key points that you really need to get right. Uh, so you need to make sure that you have the process in place to get those things right. Uh, and then at a later point in time, you can look at a system. Um, what kind of electronic system can we use to do that? But as I say, you've got to get the process right first. Now, I suppose if I'm monitoring that then also those, those new processes, you can very quickly establish whether it's working or not. Yeah, uh, absolutely, or yeah. Not. And that's actually something we, we should have talked about. At the same time, you're sort of developing a budget. You should also develop some KPIs, some key performance indicators, uh, and then track those. And that can be on the sales side, okay, how many, con how many potential customers, how many prospects did we contact this week? You know, I don't know, if we have a website, how many website hits did we get this week? Uh, if we're using Google AdWords, again, you know, mm. how, how many leads do we get? What's the cost of the lead? Uh, and it could be, uh, again, um, you know, was all our bookkeeping done, you know, up to date by a certain day of the week or the month or whatever? Uh, in that particular example, it's obviously how many times do we have, how many times did the production person have to go back to the salesperson to clarify a, a point, okay? And then what you do by measuring these things, you say, okay, well, you know, obviously we want zero, we want our KPI on um, this um, having to go back to the salesperson for clarification, we want that to be zero. Mm. But it's really important, okay, if it's not zero, it's not zero, okay, now what happened? Uh, and that's the way you manage, um, you know, not just the financial side, but the key processes in, in your business is measure, measuring them. It was Jack Welsh, the famous um, CEO of General Electric, who said if, if, it's, um, if, it's not, if it's not measured, you can't manage it. Mm. So there, there are a handful of key things in, in your startup business that you have to measure, make sure you identify them and measure them. Absolutely, great stuff. 
Okay, um, what else you got? Uh, yeah, you, well, anything no. Anything else on your list? Or Absolutely. You covered, you covered a whole lot of stuff here. Well, so yeah, a lot of stuff. Well, you know, there's um, all the stuff is really easy to say. You know, obviously, it takes a lot longer to do. Um, but okay, we talked about processes. So we've got some good processes. Um, next thing to, and this is not necessary in the sequence, it's just the way we, we're talking about them. Um, um, systems. Um, in this day and age, um, we live in an incredible world really with the, the cloud and, and um, software as a service accounting products. Take advantage of that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it, it amazes me how, how many people are still, I've got another client who um, is a wholesaler and they have an inventory system, they have in inventory, that's what they do, they, they sell, sell stuff. And, uh, yeah, and they, they don't have a, an online you know, inventory management system uh, and that makes their life uh, a lot more mm -hmm. difficult. 20 years ago, I was involved in a, um, an enterprise resource planning um, system selection process for that ship and rig building yard I was uh, worked for over in the States. Yeah. And we had all the big boys in, um, SAP, um, Oracle, J.D. Edwards and Barn, and, and they did, we did this big bake-off, this big show-off, you know, um, pony dog and pony show for going over a week. Um, and then, but basically $5 million was table stakes for these systems, okay? Now obviously, okay, that was a billion dollar company, but I just remember distinctly that process and the capabilities the different systems had, particularly obviously I was in the accounting function, so I paid a lot of attention to that. Um, but you know, I look at that and I look at what Xero does for 60 bucks a month, and mm. Xero does a pretty decent chunk of, of what that, um, those other systems did, and particularly Xero with an inventory management system or a customer relationship management system. You know, you kind of you know, bolt those together um, you have extraordinary capability for a few hundred bucks a month. Mm. So for goodness sake, um, you know, take advantage of that, of what's out there for a very reasonable, pro a very reasonable price. Because the key thing is if you don't do it, your, your competitors uh -huh. are, yeah. and, and, and they're going to kick you in the posterior. This, this day and age, you see the cloud, they say you just have to be, you have to be able to access things anywhere for the same, the industry right. guys have it. Don't, so do you know, not computerized and yes. on the cloud, you know, you've got to be wherever you are with your customer and you don't know the answer, it's almost too late, you know, you've got to oh, it's embarrassing. produce it in front of you. It's or, absolutely or embarrassing. You've got know, some amazing systems out there, there's um, you know, a product called Quotient that does, does beautiful quotes and, and so I've got a customer and they, they've moved to this system so they can go on site, kind of do a measure up, that was a carpet company, um, create this nice, quick, get every, everything here um, and then um, hit a button that emails the quote to the person who happens to be standing there, they bing, they, they get on their email, they can see the quote, there's an accept button, and they go, okay, right, bang, accept, boom, done. Mm. You know, and that's off, um, that invoice is off um, automatically into zero, and away they go, but it looks beautiful. And just imagine what kind of experience that is as, as a consumer. Mm. You know, this, they came here, they measured, they sent me this beautiful looking quote, when I'm all hot and bothered and excited, and more likely to say yes, yeah, yeah, you know, right. <laughs> get, get them, get them when they're hot, get that accept, and now you've got a contract. Now, now they're committed. Uh, again, and that, that's just technology, uh, and it's all out there, and it's very reasonable. So make make a point of um, of using that, um, but but use it correctly. Uh, I know some people who've made the mistake of getting cheap on the setup, and they tried to do the setup themselves, and they just caused themselves mm. endless problems. Yep. Again, you're not an expert. You know, you, again, give yourself a break. You know, you're not an expert on setting up systems. Don't do it. You know, for a thousand bucks or fifteen hundred, hundred bucks or something, you can get someone else. Obviously, an accountant or a bookkeeper can set up zero for you. But again, that, that's part of that team of, of people out there that you're ac accessing their knowledge. Yeah, the sooner people under, understand when they're building a team, they have to build a team and yes. build, pay for money for processes pay for someone sitting next door to take all that work off you, Yes, the, the better, and I'm, I'm constantly trying to do you know, that with the people on our team at the moment mm. sort of thing as well, but um, the sooner they do that, the sooner they realise, geez, the world's a, a big place of unlimited potential, it's almost any ability, right. especially at this, this day and age more than absolutely. ever. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So well, I like to talk about people, because that's a critical element, and that's a, um, every small business I talk to, that's probably one of their number one concerns mm -hmm. is is I can't get good staff um, so some people are you know I can't keep good staff um, or I, I don't feel I'm getting the best out of my staff so that's sort of you know that's a mixture of recruitment and, and, and human resources issues and, and management issues mm. um, so the, yeah the first thing to do it, well, I, I mean I explain if you think okay if you hire a person 
and it's a thousand person company, okay, well, you know, okay, that's one thousandth of the employees. If you're a small company of three or four or five people and then you hire a person, that person's 20 or 30 percent or, or whatever of your, um, of your staff. If you make the wrong hire, oh my goodness, that can be such a problem. So don't again, oh, you know, I, I've got this mate and I've got that mate, oh, that'd be great, it'll all be good. You really need to start with, okay, what's the job? You know, and then there's some great online products. Uh, there's a company, Talent Propeller, uh, who we use. Um, and they, it's, it's an online per sort of personality assessment tool. And it's not really, you know, we're not looking at this as a nice person or, or whatever. I mean, some people are extroverts and you want them in sales and some people are not. And you want them doing bookkeeping as an extreme example. But you want to make sure that you're getting the right person for the position. So again, you, so you need to sit down and again, this is where your processes, you've got your processes figured out, you, you can then say, okay, th this, is, this is the type of person I need in this process, Th therefore you can then go to a, a recruitment firm or, you know, uh, and then you can make sure that you get that, the right person. Because uh, again, I have another client, they, they um, you know, had, had a, made a bad hire, kind of owner's kind of gut feel, you know, I like, you know, I like this person, this person is in sales and she just shouldn't be there. Mm. Now she's got incredible knowledge. She'd be a great sort of production person. She really knows her stuff, but she is just not a salesperson. Uh, and so that's just a really awkward situation for mm. everyone. And obviously in this day and age with employment law, you know, that, that's a, you, you've got to be very careful. And, mm. you know, so it's, an, and that's not, you know, I don't necessarily disagree with, with, with a lot of employment law. I think employers need to be fair uh, to employees. Um, I'm, I'm, you know, but it, it's the problem employers get themselves in a jam because that they made a bad decision or a series of bad decisions. So it really comes back to you to, to um, understanding you know, the role and therefore the type of person and then finding, using some, some resource to find, to find that person. Um, and so, and then there's the, I guess, people. So if you've got the right, people, the right type of people doing the right things, that's great, a great start. Mm -hmm. Next thing is um, culture. Um, you know, everyone likes to work at a, at a fun place. You know, I really enjoyed, um, auditing was a pretty dry job, but, um, but KPMG had a great culture and I really enjoyed, I have very fond memories of, of working at that firm uh, and the friends I made, I've made lifelong friends there. So that's an example of, of great culture. Mm. And you wanna have, you're the biggest influence on your company, okay? An organization takes on the characteristics of its leader quite quickly. So if you're kind of, I don't know, a bit grumpy or you don't, you know, you're not spending time on people and culture, th that will cascade down through the organization. So it's really important that you, uh, from the beginning, you know, think about, um, and, you know, a lot of business, it needs to be intentional. It can't happen sort of casually or you know, sort of randomly. I mean, if it's important, it needs to be intentional. Culture is important, so you need to have a plan to, to make a good culture. And that can be as simple as on a monthly basis, on a Friday afternoon, you know, go out for lunch, go out for some burgers. It doesn't, this mm. doesn't involve you know, throwing you know, lots of money around. Um, the, um, one of those firms I just talked about, one of my clients, um, you know, they went to um, um, a day spa on a Friday afternoon. And you know, the owner would say, man, I, I, I just couldn't believe it. You know, everyone just, just loved it. You know, it was relevant when you look at the money that was spent, but then the impact that it had on how people looked at the company and their jobs and the vibe in the office, it was just phenomenal. Mm. So you need to um, spend, uh, not spend, focus, you know, really work on that culture and, and how you're gonna keep that, uh, how you're gonna have be a great company to, to work for. The other importance of culture, of course, is then it becomes much easier to get people, to yeah. hire people when you're looking for new people. You know, if you've got someone in there who's saying, oh, this is, this is great, I'm loving it, have so much fun, well, guess what? They probably got friends who at some point in time are gonna be looking for a job. Mm. Now again, you, you put that person through the appropriate test to make sure you're getting the right person for the right job, but you know, that, that makes life a lot easier. I mean, great companies attract great staff, and you know, in order for you to be successful, you need great staff when, when you grow. Uh, great staff are going to you know, go out. They're going to give you suggestions. They're going to go out of their way to do a great job. You know, staff who are not so great or good staff who are not happy. You're not going to get that. They're going to mm. sit there. They're going to do their job. That they need the wage. You know, they they might be physically in your office, but mentally they're somewhere else. Um, you know, staff that aren't happy, either bad staff or or staff that aren't happy, are going to really negatively impact your possibilities of success, particularly in a startup phase. Again, that's mm. so important. Um, Absolutely motivated, yeah, motivated, happy, and just 
and, and yeah, I love the staff that, yeah, when you hire staff and they, they have an invested interest in the company, they want to see the company yeah, exactly. work, and if you can get that happening, that's, that's oh, a great that's thing. That's fantastic, you know, I mean, ha have, you know, figure out a bonus structure, you know, or just, just early on, if you don't have a lot of money, you just celebrate success, mm. find an excuse to compliment people on, on something, you know, be, be Mr. Mr. or Mrs. Happy. Or, or mishappy around the firm is, is so important. Mm. Um, you know, praise, don't scold. Um, all right, so that's, that's uh, staff is important. Now the other, maybe the most important person in a company, of course, is the owner. Uh, so that's you. Uh, and so what do you need to do? Um, well, if you do a lot of what we talk about, a lot of it comes down to planning. Planning is your job. It's your job to figure out what you're trying to do, what the customer wants, how you're gonna do it. Okay, so you, it's your job to, to get that in place all the building blocks of success. Uh, and a lot of that comes down to how you spend your time. Uh, and that's a huge determinant of the effectiveness of not just the owner of a company, but, but anyone, it's how they spend their time. It's your mm -hmm. most precious, time is your most preci precious resource, it's finite, uh, you never get it back. Once it's gone, it's gone. So, and you, so you need to figure out at the different stages of your company, you know, what is the most important thing that you need to be doing? Uh, and you want to get everything else as much as possible off your desk. Okay, so that comes from again building the team. Like you're not doing book working, uh, uh, bookkeeping. Uh, bookkeepers doing that. Okay, if you're not the salesperson, okay, you've got a salesperson. You've got a system and a process, and, and you can measure them. And they're doing sales. Empower your staff, and then whatever it is that you need to do that gives you the highest payoff. In my, in my case, you know, I, I monitor this. Uh, I get most of my. Um, new business from referrals. So uh, I put a lot of time and effort and I make sure I measure the amount of time and effort on a weekly basis that I'm putting into my networking groups, that I'm putting into one-to-ones and, and, and meeting and talking with people like Mark. And that's how I'm getting um, most of my, in fact, just about all um, my new business. So that's what I need, I need to be doing. I need to attract new business. I need to execute the business. So again, I've got set aside time to make sure I do what I need to do uh, to keep my clients happy and I'm trying to figure out w what I can get off my desk in mm. terms of you know, other people who, who could do these certain things for, for the client so I can stick to, to where I add the most value. Uh, and so that's, that's what you need to do. So figure out what was the most valuable thing you need that needs to be done in your company, the most valuable use of your time and make sure you're doing that. Because that might not be the most urgent thing. Again, you've probably seen the, the diagram of um, the graph where you have, you know, it's urgent is one axis and important is the and the other axis, and we all spend a lot of time in the box that's urgent and important, um, and that's, you know, as it should be. You've got to make sure you're spending some of your time in um, urgent and important but not urgent, okay? So that, that's the planning box, or that could be, again, the, refer the for me, that's the referral, uh, the referral work. It's very easy to me for me to just spend all my time on my on my clients. If I do that, my uh, my pipeline of business is going to mm. drop away. So, um, so yeah, I, I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you uh, got a lot of something out of it, and um, good luck. Yeah, no, that's no, great having you along, James. And as as I said, there's a you know when I first started, I just I just started and went with the flow and, and met a few good people and more the property side, not rather than the business side of things. And I, I lacked probably a lot for for a wee while because of that. So it's um, it's been great the last sort of five or six years and four years especially, uh, where I've I've done virtually everything you've been going through today. So I'm feeling yeah. quite good about myself now. <laughs> good for you. Good <laughs> but, for um, you. But uh, but I know there's a lot of people out there who just just want to start. And they want to start a team. And you know, one thing I'd say is don't be scared to hire two or three people. Um, you can offset all those really good jobs that you do very well, but someone else can actually do it as good as you. And you know what? Maybe probably, better. probably better. Yeah. I mean, and, and yeah. that's good. I mean. As Mark said, you know, you want to want to be the the, the 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 least smart person in your organisation. If you hire a bunch of smart people, get them motivated. Mm. Wow, you're unstoppable. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, so hopefully, everyone's and I'm sure they have enjoyed a lot of good tips here, and it can help a lot of people in different different ways. Whether they're, you know the person out there with 20 staff or someone who was just starting out. Mm -hmm. So um, that's great. Just one thing, I'd just like to uh, just ask you if anyone's here and saying the last. 30 minutes and gone, how do I get hold of this guy, James? Uh, what's the best way to do that? Absolutely. Well, if you can go to our website, um, www.oxygen8.co.nz, um, you'll, you'll find uh, me and a bunch of other Oxygen 8 people there. Um, if you're around New Zealand, outside of Auckland, you can go to um, the consulting group, um, TCG, 
uh, and uh, you'll find people uh, in your region. Um, we have a, um, a, a process, three hours of free consulting, if, if you're interested in, in, in talking. And what that is, we have a, a discovery meeting where we, for an hour, we just talk to you about either where you are in your existing business or what your new idea is. Then we have what we call a diagnostic, which is when we, you go through and you answer a whole bunch of questions about your, your business or your idea and give us some financial information. We try to put a dollar value to the opportunity. And then we have another meeting, which is, you know, do we want to, you know, is there something here? Do we want to, does it make sense to work together? Now, um, now for Oxygenate, that process is free. So that's three hours of free consulting. Uh, even if we don't work together, um, that's okay. You will have got something useful out of those three hours. Um, and uh, you know we enjoy doing it. It's uh, it's fun, and that, that's how we get our business. So uh, either go to our website. My personal cell number is 027-977-4669. Um, give me a call. I look forward to talking to you. Great stuff, and uh, I'm sure we've all got a lot out of sort of 35, 40 minutes here. So three hours will be quite immense, I'm sure, for any person in business starting out or who's been going for a while and has issues. So hey, thanks again, James. Um, pleasure having you here. And uh, we'll, we'll thank you so much, Mark. We'll My pleasure. see you again on our Thursday network meeting we, we both belong to. We will, bright and early. <laughs> Absolutely. And um, thanks for listening, guys. And we'll be back in two weeks with uh, another um, guest on the show. Thanks.